In this video, we're going to learn how to create a Valorant slash Overwatch style deployable wall in Godot. Start with the first person character controller, watch my tutorial if you don't know how to make one, and all we're going to do right now is right click on the camera node and add a recast node. Make sure to turn enabled on, set the cast to 0 on the Y axis, and set the max range by setting the Z cast to any negative number you want. I went with negative 10. Next we need to create the deployable wall, and we're going to do this in two separate pieces. First we'll create the wall itself by creating a new empty scene and clicking the plus button at the top left. Add a static body node as the main node, I'm going to rename it to wall. Then right click on wall and add a mesh instance node as a child of it. Click on empty, add a new cube mesh and adjust its dimensions so that the wall is the correct size and shape for your game. Feel free to add a texture to it if you want. Next right click on the main node and add a collision shape node. Give it a new box shape and adjust its dimensions so that it matches the dimensions of the wall. After that, shift click both the mesh and the collision shape and move it up a bit otherwise it will spawn into the game halfway sunk into the ground. Don't forget to save the scene. Next we need to create what I call a wall sprite. Basically it's a transparent preview of the wall that tells you where the wall will be placed before you actually place it. Create a new scene and press the 3D scene button to create an empty spatial node. Rename it to wall sprite. Add a mesh instance node as a child of the main node. Give it a cube shape and change its dimensions to exactly match the dimensions of the wall we just created. Next to material, give it a new spatial material. Click on the preview window and under flags, make sure transparent is enabled. Then under albedo, change its color to something similar to the wall's color, I went with red. And move the A slider to the left to make it semi-transparent. Don't forget to move the mesh instance node into the correct position as well, and then save the scene. Next go to project and project settings and in the input map tab create two new inputs called ability and fire. Then go back to the FPS controller scene, right click on the raycast node and add a new script. All we're going to do here is spawn in the wall sprite when we press the ability button. And so first we need to preload the wall sprite by writing on ready var wall sprite equals preload. And then we need to get the path of the wall sprite scene by navigating to the scene in our project folders, right clicking the scene and then selecting copy path. Then just copy the path inside the parentheses in quotes to finish preloading the scene. Next create a new function by writing func input event and in it write if input dot is action just press ability if not get child zero var ws equals wall sprite dot instance add child ws else get child zero dot q free. So when we press the ability button, if the raycast doesn't have a child attached to it, it will spawn in a wall sprite as its child. But if it already has a child, then it'll delete the child. This way we can turn this ability on and off with just a single button. But if we run the game as it is now, nothing will appear to happen. So let's fix that. Go to the wall sprite scene and add a new script to the main node. We're going to be using the raycast on the camera and where it collides with the environment to move the wall sprite to that collision point. And to do that, we need to create a reference to the raycast. But how do we get a reference to a node in a completely different scene? Well in this case it's pretty simple. We're just going to write on ready var raycast equals get parent. When we activate the wall deployability, we spawn the wall sprite in as a child of the raycast. As soon as the wall sprite spawns in, it will attempt to find its parent node, which in this case is the raycast. So then we can use the collision information from the raycast to move the sprite. We also need to get a reference to the character controller itself, and to do that we'll write on ready var raycast owner equals get parent dot get owner. Get owner is a very useful function that grabs the main node of any particular object. And so we use get parent to get the raycast, and then we use get owner to get the main node or the owner of the raycast, which is the FPS controller. We also need to preload the wall scene by writing on ready var wall equals preload and then the path to the scene. In the ready function, delete pass and write set as top level true, which makes the wall sprite move independently of the raycast, as well as global transform dot origin equals raycast dot get collision point. And this will set the wall sprite's position as the raycast collision point as soon as it spawns in. Then we'll create a new input function, func input event, and in it we'll write if input dot is action just press fire, var w equals wall dot instance, which prepares the wall to appear in the game, w dot global transform equals global transform, which sets the position of the wall to be the same as the wall sprite, get tree dot get root dot add child w, which spawns in an instance of the wall as a child of the main node of the entire game, not just the FPS controller. 
Then we'll delete the wall sprite by writing Q free. Next, to make the wall sprite follow the raycast collision point, create a process function, func process delta, and in it write global transform.origin equals raycast.getCollision point. And so if we were to run the game as it is now, pressing the ability key will spawn in the wall sprite, which will follow the collision point of the raycast, but you'll notice that it's rotated at a weird angle. To fix that, go back to the script and write rotation equals raycast owner dot rotation so that it copies the rotation of the FPS controller so that it's always standing upright and facing directly towards you. Run the game and now when you press the ability button, you'll see the wall sprite. And when you press the fire button, you'll spawn in a physical wall. And just like that, you have something similar to an Overwatch or Valorant style deployable wall. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, bell, links to the Twitter and Discord down below. And as always, have a nice day.